Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents The City of the Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. But first, your announcer. o'clock at night in October, the second night in the City of the Dead. Three men stand on the edge of a partly opened grave. A fourth stands in the grave itself, whispering, I've struck something, something awful. That was Jimmy Parker. The three men above him on the brink of the grave are Joshua Friday, mayor of the City of the Dead, otherwise known as the caretaker of the old cemetery. Dr. Tuner, now retired from practice, since he has buried his last patient here in the city. And third, Captain Friday, son of the mayor, a private investigator. A grave had been tampered with, and tonight it is being reopened officially to discover why. First, Captain Friday would dig, and then Jimmy Parker would dig, and it was Jimmy who uncovered the dead arm, reaching up. There's something else you should know about Jimmy. He and his girlfriend, Phyllis Carroll, are virtual prisoners of the mayor, Doc Tuner, and Captain Friday. In fact, at the moment, Phyllis is locked in the bedroom assigned to her up at the mayor's bungalow just inside the cemetery gates. Jimmy and Phyllis themselves are under slight suspicion of grave robbing. But just now, Phyllis is locked up, and Jimmy is down in the grave with something horrible. Just as Parker whispered his discovery, there was a hair-raising wail from among the gravestones. It disappeared, Captain Friday. You must have hit it. I didn't hit anything. I fired into the air. Dr. Tuner... Mayor Friday, everybody, I tell you, I dug up something. What's that? You're crazy, Parker. You won't hit the coffin under four or five feet. I have struck something. It, it's an arm. Jumping G. Josephus. Are you lying, Parker? Let me turn my flash down in the hole. I tell you, hey. Didn't you ever see a dead man before? Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Grab him, Doc. You can't let him go. Let me behave yourself. Let me go. Let me get away from here. You shouldn't have hit him so hard, Captain. And when he comes to, we won't have any more hysteria than your grandmother. Yeah, you're a tough customer, I'm afraid, my boy. Sure, why not, Mayor? That's part of the game. Yeah. Aim out here on the grass. He'll be around presently. Well, he wasn't far off. He struck something pretty ghastly, all right. But, son, that ain't Ernie Martin's body. Sure it isn't, Dan. Ernie died a natural death 20 years ago. This man was murdered last night. Do you mean that, Captain? You're a doctor. You should know. Here, take a look at his face. Strangled. Strangled. Not long ago, either, was it? Not more than 24 hours. Hmm. Here, hand me the shovel. I'll finish uncovering the body, and we'll take it up to the shed behind the cottage. Did you recognize him, Doc? No, I didn't, Mayor. It isn't anyone I ever saw before. Wasn't Lammy Fink, then? By jiggers, I never thought about him. Let's have another squint at that face, Captain. I looked especially, Doctor. It isn't Lammy. Lammy has a deep scar at the roots of the hair on his forehead. There's none on this fellow. No wonder somebody ran by the cottage and out of the city of the dead in hysterics last night. You think maybe it was the murderer we heard, Captain? No, not likely. Why not? Anyone with the courage to commit murder in a graveyard isn't likely to have a case of hysteria. Besides, anyone as frightened as that wouldn't have stopped to bury his victim and replant the turf on the grave. Then where does the hysterical man fit in? I don't know, but I can give a guess. Let's have it, son. Uh, maybe some passerby who saw something he wasn't meant to see. Perhaps the murder. Ran out of the city of the dead, scared out of his wits. Yeah, you don't have passerbys way off down here, son. Oh, we'll have to see. Yeah. Now, I think we can lift the body out. Here, doctor, can you reach the arms? Yeah. Good. Up we go. There it is. Oh, unhappy business. 
You're not nervous, Dr. Tooney. Mm, yes, I am, Dad. Blame you. What of it? Now, it's perfectly okay with me, Doc. Dad, you got a stretcher around someplace, haven't you? In the shed behind the house where you got the shovel. I'll run up and get it. No fun carrying a body around in your arms. Keep an eye on young Parker. Shall I fill in the grave while you're gone? Don't touch anything. I want to examine that grave by daylight. You just wait around. I won't be long. Hey, Mayor, do you know what I think about this whole business? No. How should I know what you think when I don't know what to think myself? Why in tarnation should anybody dig up one man's grave to shove another one in it? Well, I'll tell you what I think. I've got an idea that someone else has got onto the trail of what we've been after for years. You think that's what's at the bottom of all this? Yes, I do. Uh, Mayor, I, I told the captain all about this. Then you broke your word, Doc Tudor. We promised to never say a word. Well, it was necessary, Mayor. It was the only way I could make him keep Parker here and that Phyllis Carroll prisoners. Besides, he's your own flesh and blood. Mm, he's that all right. Is he going to help us? Well, he wouldn't promise. The only thing he agreed to was to hold the kids a week to find out whether they knew anything about how you came to be shot. You think they know anything about... about... the other? Well, of course they do. Uh, think they were responsible for this killing? Well, I don't know. The girl was mighty anxious to keep away from this grave tonight. The boy held out better, but you saw how hysterical he got. That looks suspicious. So it does. So it does. Still, they don't fit into the picture right. There's something more to it. They couldn't have rung that phantom church bell we've been hearing. Neither could one of them have been the claw-footed men that tromped on me in the old church. They were both locked up in the cottage at the time. Could have friends helping them. Yeah, it looks like a gang, all right. Looks like two gangs. Else why the murder? Jupiter, Mayor, if they're out after the same thing we are and want it bad enough to commit murder... Yes, I've been thinking about that. Well, I'm not telling anyone I know anything. You already shot off your mouth... The claw-footed man again. Look. Look. See him, Mayor? I'm going after him. No, don't do it, Mayor. Don't do it. Look. Look how he bobs and floats among the graves. Oh, no, let loose of me, Doc. Let loose. Come on. We can catch it. Ah! Hey, we're getting everything. Do you hear that bell? Save your breath. We're gaining on it. Run faster. Well, why don't you shoot, Mayor? You got your pistol, haven't you? Yeah. Yes, of course. And I forgot all about it. Stop a minute and we'll take a crack at it. Jumping Jupiter, Mayor. Where did it go? I dropped it. That's what happened. You know, you didn't. You didn't fall. It just vanished. Wait and see. Cut across the lawn here. But don't walk on the graves. Well, it was right ahead. Uh, here you are. Now, where's your claw-footed man? Uh, probably just wounded him. Maybe he dragged himself off. Why, well, we'd have seen him, I tell you. He just plain vanished. I tell you, I dropped him. All right, all right. Hi, but Dad, where... Doc, what's happened? Listen. Where are you? Hi, Doc Tuner. There's the captain. Hiya, Captain. Here we are. Coming. Dad, all right? Yep, he's all right. Hey, where have you two been? Where's the body? Body? What body, Captain? A body we just dug up. Look here, son. You ain't fooling us, are you? Of course I'm not. You mean to tell me you don't know where it is? Yeah, look here, Captain Friday. Let's get this straight. Ain't the body lying beside the grave where we left it? It is not. Y y you're sure it's gone? It's gone, all right. What have you two been up to? We was chasing that clawfoot fella. Well, he came right down here close by and let off a whole series of whales, so we took after him. Got away, huh? Yep, vanished when the mayor took a shot at him. I hit him. The mayor thinks he hit him, or it, or whatever it is, but it was gone when we got to the spot where it vanished. And while you were out chasing ghosts, the strangled body got up and walked off. I thought I told you fellas to watch young Parker. I mean, what's happened to him? He got up and walked off, too. Oh, come on, let's go back to the grave. Yeah? Did he take the body? How should I know? And Parker got away? He did not. As I came out of the shed with the stretcher, I heard a noise in the house. I peeked in the window and saw young Parker releasing Phyllis Carroll. Left the key in the door, didn't you? Well, thought it'd be safe enough. What was the boy's idea? Well, it looked as though they were trying to make a getaway. Hmm. Trying to run away. That looks bad for him, eh, Captain? Hmm. Ah, here's the grave. Still got the hole left, anyway. Mm, empty, all right. I wish we'd have caught that whaling critter. Might have solved everything. Who ever heard of catching a decoy? Decoy? Sure, Dad. Looks like your whaling ghost wanted you to chase him. Wanted to get you out of the way. But why? Mm, likely we weren't supposed to examine the corpse. Probably its identification would have solved the whole business. Joe, I hadn't thought of that. Well, what's to be done? We're going back to the house and see what Parker and Miss Carroll know. I've got him locked up in his room
Miss Carroll, Captain Friday wants to see you in the living room. What's happened? Never mind. Go on into the other room. Come on out, Parker. The captain wants to see you. What rights he got slugging me and locking me up this way, even if he is Captain Friday? Well, you'd have gotten worse if you'd tried to make a break out of a jail. Now go on in the other room. Well, we'll see about these high-handed methods. Oh, come on in, Parker. Sit down. You think you're pretty smart cracking people on the jaw. Don't sit there. Come over here, away from Miss Carroll. Why shouldn't I sit by Phyllis? Oh, please, Jimmy, do what he says. Okay, okay. There, yeah, that's better. Now then, Parker, what did you do with the body? Body? Yes, Miss Carroll, we found the body. Too bad, isn't it? Body? What body? The body somebody planted in old Ernie Morton's grave last night. Oh, Jimmy. We don't know anything about anybody. Be careful, Phil. They're trying to frame you. Oh, so we're trying to frame you, are we? Tell me something, Miss Carroll. Yes? Did you see Parker the day he got his job? What job? You know, the gardening job, Phil, over at the university. Oh. Oh, that? Why, uh, why, no. No, I didn't see him that day. Let me see. What day was it he got this job? Why, uh, why... No, no, look at me, Miss Carroll. Don't look at Parker. That's better. Now then, when did Jimmy tell you he got that gardening job? Why, I... I've just forgotten. Sometime last week, I think. He told you about getting the job, did he? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, well, Parker. So you told Miss Carroll about the job last week, huh? I don't know what you mean. Well, then I'll explain. Didn't you tell me you got that job two days ago? Yes. Then how could you have told Miss Carroll about it last week? This is Saturday. That would have been at least a week ago. What about it? Oh, come on now. Admit it. You haven't got a gardening job and you never had one. Isn't that the truth? Well... Answer me. You haven't a job, have you? No. Oh. Then how did you get those fresh blisters on your hands? Oh, Jimmy, I'm sorry. No, that's all right, Phil. It wasn't your fault. Never mind, Miss Carroll. Answer me, Parker. How did you get those blisters? I... Uh, I was... You got them opening a grave, now, didn't you? How can you even think of such a thing? Answer me, Parker. It's none of your business. None of my business whether you go about strangling folks? Oh, he didn't. He didn't kill anyone. Oh, Jimmy, tell them the truth. The truth? Phyllis, what are you talking about? Yes, Miss Carroll. What are you talking about? What? Well, well, oh, I've been so upset by all this. Oh, Jimmy, I want to go home. <laughs> Oh, so Jimmy Parker and Phyllis Carroll are up to their chins in this after all. But what are a good-looking young woman and a college boy doing mixed up with grave robbing and murder? And, but more in just a moment. Dr. Tuna, take Miss Carroll to her room and see if you can quiet her. There, there, now, Miss Carroll. You'll feel better after a good night's rest. Now then, Parker, let's have the truth. I haven't anything to say. I'd guess you have plenty to say. You lied about the blisters. You tried to escape after we discovered a murder victim in Ernie Morton's grave. And on top of that, now the body has vanished. We've got a lot of explaining to do. I tell you, I don't know anything. Phyllis urged you to tell the truth. What was she talking about? She was scared. She didn't know what she was saying. She did know what she was saying. What did she mean? I don't know. Yeah. Why did you try to escape after you saw the body? I wasn't going to stay here and be beaten up by you. That wasn't the reason. Something about that body terrified you. Now, what was it? It, it was just a dead body. I never saw a murdered man before. That wasn't it. Something about that body got under your skin. Did you murder that man? No, I swear I didn't. I swear it. Did you recognize the body? No, no, of course I didn't recognize it. Yes, you did, Parker. The moment you saw that face, you let out a yell. Oh, please, Captain Friday, please let us go. Don't you understand? Can't you see? Can't I see what? The same thing will happen to all of us if you keep us here. We'll all be murdered. How do you figure that out? I know it. I know it. 
Wouldn't you be in just as much danger if I let you go? Oh, no, really. The danger's here, Captain. The danger's in the city of the dead. What do you mean by that? What danger? A murderer. What murderer? There's someone in the city of the dead that intends to kill everyone who knows... Who knows what? I can't tell. I couldn't if I wanted to. How long have you known of this... this murderer? Since I saw the body. And you did recognize it? Yes. Who was it? I can't tell you. Now, look here, Parker. If you are in as much danger as you say you are, I should think you and Miss Carroll would want protection. But it isn't only us. Don't you understand? You're in danger, too. So is the mayor and Dr. Tuner. What's that? I tell you, it's true. They won't stop at anything. They? Is it a gang? No. No, I don't know. So you won't talk to save your own life? No. Isn't there anything that would make you talk? Will you let me talk alone with Phyllis for a little? Then will you tell us what we want to know? If she's willing. But she's already begged you to tell. She doesn't know all I know. Oh, I see. In other words, you want to tell her the name of the murdered man. I didn't say that. Hmm. Very well, I'll let you talk to her. Hey, doctor. Yes, Captain? I'm going to send Parker in to see Phyllis. Is she all right? Oh, sure. She's all right. I gave her powder. You want her to come out? No, I'm giving Parker here five minutes with her alone. Go on in, Parker. Yes, sir. Let him shut the door, doctor. It's just five of ten. You got till ten o'clock. Yeah, right in here, son. Okay. Oh, Jimmy, what's it all about? How did we get into all this trouble? Look here, Phyllis. We've got to face it. There's something horrible going on in this place. But you said it would be all right. You said all we'd have to do would be to come down here and dig the... Shh, be careful, Phil. They may be listening. But why do we have to be careful? Why don't you tell everything? Phyllis, do you know who that was we dug up tonight? You... You mean the body? Yes. Oh, please. It wasn't anyone I know. It was, Phil. I'm sorry. Oh, oh Jimmy, who was it? It was your cousin, Bert Arnold. Oh, no, please, Jimmy. Please, don't cry, Phyllis. I'm awfully sorry, but you just had to know. Oh, but I... Oh, I just saw Bert yesterday. Oh, who would want to kill Bert, Jimmy? Look here, Phil. I think Bert was down here for the same reason we came. Oh, but how did he know? I... I thought I was the only one who knew. I don't know how he found out, but it looks to me like he did know and someone killed him while he was nosing around down here. Oh, Jimmy, this is awful. Awful. What are we going to do? I don't know. Whoever killed Bert is probably out after us, too. Oh, Jimmy, don't say that. You might as well face it. Have you any idea who it could be? Oh, no. No. Any relatives? Well, Mother's the only relative I've got, besides Bert. Any distant relative that might have found out something in some way? Oh, I don't know. No one I know of. Oh, please, why can't we tell Captain Friday all about it? What do you suppose he's going to think if we tell him what we came down here for... And then told him the murdered man was your cousin. Oh, I don't know. I do. You'd think we killed him. Oh, but we didn't. We didn't. Oh, of course not, but... Well, if you want me to tell... Oh, not, if they, not if they'll think we killed him. Well, they will. You can count on that. Well, then we mustn't tell. We mustn't. Oh, I don't know what I'll tell Mother. We'll be lucky not to get kicked out of the university for this. Oh, shh, listen. Come on out, Parker. Time's up. You won't tell. You won't tell, will you, Jimmy? No, fellas, but listen. If you hear anyone trying to get into your room, yell. Don't wait a minute, do you understand? Oh, what well, do you think... Come on out of there, Parker. Coming! Remember what I say, Phyllis. Don't take any chances. Good night, Phil. Be careful, Jimmy. Sure. Well, here I am. Yeah. You ready to talk? No. Oh, it's that way, huh? Yeah, that way. Then go on into your room. But let me tell you this, Parker. If you don't come through with me, and mighty soon I'll take you into San Francisco and throw you to the cops. You'll be only too glad to talk. I'll go on to bed and think it over. Did you lock both doors, Captain? Right. And I'm keeping the keys to both Parker's and Miss Carroll's rooms with me. Are there any more keys to those two bedrooms, Mayor? No, those are all, son. Hmm. 
No, it's quarter past ten. I'm turning in. It's going to be heavy work from now on. <laughs> but, Captain, do you think we might be in any danger? After all, a man has been murdered here. Who can tell where danger is? Doc, you and the mayor double up in the big bed in the front room. I'm going to make myself comfortable here on the lounge beside the fire. Yeah, now, look here, son. You won't be comfortable there. Do what I say, Dad. I'm going to boss things around here for a while. Yeah, young jack and apes turn you across my knee. <laughs> Good night. Of the house. Hey, are you sure? Yeah, of course. Hurry. Is, is Phyllis all right? Yeah, I made sure of it. Everyone's asleep. What are we going to do? Find out who it is. Isn't it a man? Well, if it is, he's certainly got himself rigged out. You've seen it? Yeah. What does it look like? Well, by moonlight, it looks like a cross between the headless horseman and one of Shakespeare's witches. Come on, fella. Aren't you almost ready? Yeah, just a minute. One more shoe. Oh, here it is. Get into it. Oh, thanks. Why are you ringing me in on this detective business? I thought I was a prisoner. Well, if this fellow's hanging around for a chance to murder you, as you seem to believe, I just thought I'd give him a chance at you. You, you don't really mean that. Well, you know what I mean. All right. Hang right on my coattail and you won't be in any danger even if this fella is after you. Come on. All right. He seems to be patrolling around the house. We'll watch here at the window until we spot him, then we'll slip outside and lay for him. Where did you see him? I watched him circle the house twice. Look, look, there he comes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what is it? Can you see his face, Parker? Look sharp. Yeah. Now, long hair strangling down all over his face. Hey, look, it's crouching down. Looks like an animal that scents its prey. Look in the shadow there. There's something else moving. It's coming out in the moonlight. A man. He's coming toward the house. He doesn't see that crouching thing. Hello. The fellow's going around to the back of the house. The thing's following him. He doesn't see it. There they go around the corner. Come on, we gotta see the end of this. Easy now. There. Leave the door on the latch so that we can get back in fast if we have to. Mm. Follow close. Just a minute. Here, let me take a peek around the corner. It's all in shadow. Can't see a thing. Well, I have to take a chance. Come on. Softly. Hold it. I'll give a look around this corner. Now we'll get some moonlight in the back of the house. See anything? Wait. Look at that, Parker. What's happening? Somebody's working on the bars to your window. The murderer, I told you. Yeah, but where's our pet ghost? He seems to have vanished. Look, the man's cutting the bars. We'll put a stop to that right now. But I hate like the deuce to make a move in the open until I know what's become of our long-haired phantom. Maybe the thing spotted us. Well, you keep a lookout behind. <gasps> there it is. Keep down, keep down. Where? I don't see. Crouched in that shadow right behind the man. He doesn't know what's there. I wouldn't have that thing. Oh! Look out, it's killing him. It's killing him. Don't let it get away. I missed. It's gone. Quick, run for Dr. Tuner while I see if the fellow's still alive. Yeah, but I... Do what I tell you. Run. Dr. Tuner! Dr. Tuner! Dr. Tuner! Doc! Hey, Dr. Tuner! Doc! Hey, Dr. Tuner! Hey, what's your matter? Who is that? What's your matter? Is that you, doctor? Another man's been murdered. Captain Friday wants you. Where is he? Back in the cottage. Come on, I'll show you. All right, around this way. Who's been killed? I don't know. All I know is somebody's been murdered. Hey, not so fast, boy. Give an old man a break. Right down here, you can see the body in the moonlight. Hurry. Hurry, Doc. Here. Yeah. Here's the body. But where's Captain Friday? Maybe chasing the phantom. I don't know. Here, let's turn this fellow over on his back. 
See if he's still alive. Take it easy now. Uh huh. Uh, what do you mean, boy? This body is Captain Friday. Captain Friday? And where's the other body? You have just heard Chapter 3 of City of the Dead. Why is it a corpse in the City of the Dead vanishes almost as quickly as it is made? Why is this phantom creature haunting the vicinity of the caretaker's cottage? And what's happened to Captain Friday? All this will unfold next week in the fourth episode of City of the Dead, entitled Old Clawfoot Again. <laughs> <laughs> 